Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with returning guest, Rich Burhansel. He's joining us here as a global health lead at Accenture. He's talking about the highlights from Accenture's Digital Health Tech Vision 2022 report. It focuses on how emerging technologies like the metaverse are converging to basically reshape healthcare. Welcome back, Rich. How have you been? I've been great, and Neil, it's a a wonderful opportunity, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you again. Give our listeners a bit of a professional background for those who may not be familiar with you as a, a contributor. Uh, sure. I, I'm responsible for our global health business at Accenture, and in doing so, um, spend a good portion of my, my time looking ahead at, uh, to what's coming and so that we can uh, work with our partners and our clients and trying to anticipate what they should be focusing on as they look to the future. Now, it's my understanding that Accenture issues a digital health tech vision report every year. What makes this year's report different from other years? Interesting, Neil. We, um, we went out and um, talked to our uh, healthcare executives and our clients, and we found that uh, a full 81% of them expected that the metaverse would have a positive impact on the healthcare industry. We focused our report this year on the metaverse. And uh, as we think about it, we think about it as the metaverse continuum, which is a spectrum, if you will, of digitally enhanced worlds, realities, and business models uh, that can have the potential to transform nearly every aspect of our lives and our business uh, over the next decade and beyond. And that includes the healthcare industry. Now, we're all familiar with this new uh, metaverse that Facebook is offering transitioning into. How does this translate into healthcare? We think about four key trends uh, when we think about this metaverse continuum. And the one that, uh, that is likely um, uh, on the top of the mind of people who think about metaverse today is the first one, uh, which we refer to as WebMe. And what this is about is how the Internet is being reimagined as a platform for digital experiences that create boundaryless places where people can meet and interact. Um, it's also reinventing around the way uh, that data can be owned uh, by individuals and move with that person uh, where they go, not with the platform, but with the person. And when we think about that application inside of healthcare, we have this opportunity to transcend time and space to simulate interactions. For example, we might be able to go practice, if you will, a surgery on a digital twin of the person we are ultimately going to you know, perform a surgery on and learn from that practice, that virtual and, and experience, so that we can you know, optimize the outcome of a surgery. So it's really that opportunity to do something in that virtual world. And in this case, that then has a subsequent on the physical world. My mind comes up with all these different pictures of how this is going to work, how it's going to look. And I was going to ask about uh, maybe a real life example of how these uh, trends are being used in healthcare. There's a whole lot of experimentation starting to happen and I'd say early stage exploration of where the value is. And it ranges from the high transactions. So think about all the times that you or I or families or friends, you know, might um, go encounter the healthcare system, whether it's at an urgent care facility or uh, maybe just checking in for a routine appointment, or it could be something that's in the, you know, in a surgical uh, context. No matter what it is, we all know that there's some work up front that needs to be done to share your information, um, take vital signs, you know, do a bit of diagnostic before you encounter the, the healthcare system. Uh, far too often that's done manually. And, uh, and and oftentimes it's curated by, you know, clinicians who, who might be better served um, doing something more directly with uh, providing care. And so one of the, um, you know, more typical uses of the metaverse that we will see in the coming years is going to be um, virtualizing that whole experience of essentially sharing your information because your information is going to travel with you and being able to do the upfront work before you see the clinician um, in, in a virtualized environment, could be in your home, could be in the, um, in the facility, or really anywhere. So that's, a, that's an efficiency and, and a uh, self-service kind of model that allows for flexibility for the patient uh, to 
complete that information in a um, immersive way and at a time that it is sensible for them. And then from that extreme, we go to the you know less typical extreme, but this idea of being able to leverage um, virtual reality and, and, and extended reality as we practice uh, and, and conduct, let's say, surgery, and then execute surgery and, and have the support of, um, of uh, machines as we're actually executing that surgery. Uh, so we see both extremes and we see experimentation happening really uh, across that patch. You know, the medical community seems to be on point when it comes to technologies that have to do with medicine, particularly uh, certain devices, certain tools and things of that nature. But this seems to um, combine you know, AI, telehealth, all of these evolving technologies that don't necessarily have to do with medicine, but they're very effective in medicine. Is the medical community going to be able to keep up with the curve as far as AI and different softwares and things of that nature coming out? It's a it's a great question, and as we think about it, um, you know, one of the interesting things we found, Neil, is we went out again and talked to the um, our healthcare clients, and we were wondering about how much IoT and edge devices, so Internet of Things and edge devices that are already present in organizations and. Um, uh, again, 80% of them said that it's already significantly or exponentially um, increasing over the past three years. So many of the building blocks of the things that you're going to want to do, to, um, uh, to do with the metaverse are already present in the hospital. And that let me let me explain that a little bit further on the on the second point of the four trends on metaverse, and that's the program programmable world. And the idea of the programmable world is about leveraging that physical space to contribute to better care. Think about smart beds that can understand what a person's body position is or, or sense moisture, right, that is occurring in the bed and alerting a care team. Or it could be something that's, uh, that is about changing the appearance of the room based on what's going on with the patient, mm -hmm. based on sensing mood and that sort of thing. There's all kinds of possibilities and much of that technology is already starting to become um, present uh, in the in the health systems and in, in, in particular in hospital settings. So there's a real opportunity with this programmable world to leverage the physical to help, um, you know, understand and treat and care for patients. So we, we think that that's going to that's going to you know, be an important part of the movement on metaverse. Uh, and I'll add one other um, use case, if you will, to the point on examples. You think about how important it is when someone has physical therapy for the patient to um, adhere to uh, the, you know, the, let's say, exercises that are asked of them by the physical therapist. Metaverse creates an incredible opportunity. Think about the gamification of the exercises that you might need to do, depending on what your you know injury or concern is, and the ability to not only do it and have it recorded, but also to do it and and actually have the you know given the immersive nature of the metaverse and the other capabilities it provides, well not only can understand that you're doing the exercises, but can also show and be sure that you're doing them the correct way, mm -hmm. um, and get real time feedback right around how that um, how that's um, progressing. Uh, just an opportunity to really transform and go further with things like therapy. Uh, so another good example of something that we expect to emerge. What about security concerns? I mean, you know, HIPAA, 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 that's been the, the, the mantra for years and years, but now moving into the metaverse, are those security concerns going to increase, decrease, or maybe remain the same? So the way we think about it is the dependency of the metaverse upon cloud-based technology means a direct approach to leveraging the benefits of cloud security controls. So think about scale, power, compute elasticity. These all combine to create a tremendously scalable security world. Um, one of the very important things, though, on the data component of the metaverse, and, and again, one of the themes we talk about is the unreal, as we continue to explore synthetic data options so that we can 
accelerate our discovery of correlations that can help us, you know, um, have better outcomes with patients. We have to be very diligent around the use of synthetic data, um, you know, put the right controls around that. So that is a, that's a, that will be an emerging thing to pay attention to. Um, but, um, you know, one that can be, um, designed for and planned for. Rich, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for lending us your time once again here on Health Professional Radio. Thanks. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate it. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest Rich Burhansel. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 